Well, as you see from the range of uh, subject matters in the gallery I have here, uh, they're quite broad. Although I may be using different techniques and methods in many cases, the style will be very similar. But in this film, the thing I want to do most of all is talk about different ways and different techniques and methods we can use that are best suited to those particular subject matters. So for painting flowers, it might be watercolour or it might be acrylic inks. For painting landscape, it could be oils or seascapes or whatever. But we have to choose the medium to suit best the uh, picture we're doing. Now we can paint almost any um, subject matter in any medium, but some are better suited, I think. And this is what this film is about. This film is to show you some different ways of using those different mediums that will make life easier, or be more suitable, or, or will be more effective for those particular subject matters that you've chosen. Let's do that. Let's paint, deliberately paint, some very different types of subject matter. Let's paint some, some trees with very thin branches against the light. Let's paint trees in autumn. Let's paint trees in the summer, let's paint reflections in water, let's paint figures in children, let's paint some animals, let's paint many different subjects and uh, see the best effects we can get with those different mediums, shall we? And you do need to have some technical expertise, you do need to know about colour, you do need to know about colour intensity, about the colour circle, about tones, um, you need to know about the opposite of the colour circle and so on. Here you can see charts showing you just how those colour circles work and also how the tones work. When you see a very bright colour, that's colour intensity, it doesn't necessarily mean it's the same tone. The yellow for instance here looks um, quite bright, but when you see it as a tone, it's a dull grey. Tones and colour intensity are two totally different things. Complementary colour is also very important. I already have films to help you in nearly all of the areas. We have a drawing and colour video, which would be a very good foundation for you. And I also have specialist videos, for instance, especially on oil painting, or especially on pastel, or especially on watercolour, where they go into far more and far greater depth than I can do here for you. But I'll certainly give you a good foundation in this film. Then we'll look at all the different materials and paints. We'll look at acrylics. We'll look at the different ways of painting, how we can paint light over dark, so how we can paint thick over thin. Um, here you see an example of painting onto dark. We'll look at the various brushes for the various um, materials as well. Different brushes for oil painting. As you see here, the flats and the rounds. The long-handled nylons I prefer to use. We'll look at painting knives and the difference between painting knives and palette knives. They're completely different. We'll use sponges and texturing, not only in watercolour, but with oil painting as well. And uh, the peripherals to our painting, palettes, and uh, different ways of using those palettes, different materials for the palettes. This is an old traditional wooden palette, but it might be that you just use, as I do, two pieces of perspex, quite adequate, as you see here. We'll look at the colours that you might wish to choose to stock up your palette with. and how you might wish to carry those paints about. It might be in a plastic bag, it might be a nice neat case. In my case I use an old wooden case like this, nice and hardy. And then when you finish your painting with different types of varnish, I would advise normally a retouching varnish rather than a mastic varnish. You can get uh, all sorts of different varnishes from matte to glossy. 
The acrylic inks are very, very useful. We'll show how they're used. Pastels, soft pastels. I won't go into oil pastels in this particular uh, film, but I will talk about soft pastels such as the Unisons. We'll be using the Unison pastels and the Inscribe pastels. And you can see the wonderful range of colours that they have. These are the inscribes, which are cheaper and they're also a bit harder, but they do give you some very, very bright, garish colours that you can't get in the more expensive unisons, and they can be quite useful for flower painting, for instance. How you store your pastels is up to you. You may wish to put them into a nice, neat box or have them in the box they come in. Then we'll look at uh, watercolours. Here is the palette of watercolours that I keep in. Now I'll show you in more detail. Again, with these basic colours you'll be able to paint almost anything. Of course you can add more colours to your palette and if you see something interesting and unusual, try it out. Why not? Different artists all have the different favourites. And again we should be using the FW acrylic inks with watercolour as well because they are water based. Once they dry like acrylic they're waterproof. This can be very much to your advantage as well. And then there are other things that we can add to watercolours. Um, like the acrylic medium, for instance, which will make it more glossy, or the Pabio uh, drawing gum, which is a masking fluid, very, very useful. Watercolour pencils, a must for those wanting to do finer illustrations or botanical work. Then there are the brushes you might use. Obviously, you can have hundreds and thousands of brushes. Here's my wallet of brushes, and I have everything there that I need to use in almost every subject. The swords, the flats, the rounds, the filberts. About three or four of each size is quite adequate. How you put your paintings together, you may wish to use photographs. Here's an example of how you might put photographs together and composite them. Compose different uh, compositions with those photographs, chopping them up or using them on the computer. And finally we come to where we're going to paint and how we're going to paint comfortably. It might be you have different easels. Here I'm using an easel and a little camping stool. Quite adequate for painting in Norway there. You can see I have my box of watercolour paints beside me and I can reach everything I require. Or you might just lean the board on your knee, as needs must in this case, when I'm painting out at Burton Agnes Hall. A sketching easel is very, very useful. It might be a metal one or a wooden one. I prefer the wooden ones because they're lighter and they feel nicer for me. Again, you see the sketching easel here. All sorts of wonderful situations you'll be painting in, but do make sure you're portable. Do make sure you're comfortable. So a little camping stool is very handy to put over your shoulder. If you're closer to the car, of course you can take a deck chair with you. A big studio easel is needed if you're going to handle larger canvases or there's a lot of wind. I've even tied my sketching easel down and put camping pegs in as for a tent to hold an easel down in stronger wind. Here we are in Switzerland and what wonderful places we can get to paint, whether it be in the mountains, whether it be in a valley or whether it be looking over the sea.